Personally, you know, I love elephants. Um, they're very complex animals, and I think they've got a, a certain amount of intellect. They, they're definitely, their the social structures and the way that they can communicate, and the fact that the largest terrestrial mammal, there's still so many questions we don't have answers for about them, just shows that they, they are very unique still in, in certain ways. They're incredible to see, their sheer size is just so incredible. But I think um, at a more pinder level, it's, it's a very unique population of elephants. They were all brought here in, in 1991 as, as orphans. And um, so this population is, is, is very unique in the fact as it, it wasn't a naturally occurring population. Because it is a small closed reserve and we have, a, as you can see, a lot of really good food for, for species like elephants, the, the population grows really quickly. So we have a whole bunch of management tools that we can use to try and uh, maintain our population and, and make sure that they, the elephant numbers don't get too high where they become destructive on the, on the ecosystem. Some of those and then the most important ones we focus on are, are translocations. Um, but as a lot of other reserves are becoming more and more densely populated as, as we are, we're having to use different techniques such as contraception. From contraception and translocation, land expansion and being able to, to create more conservation area allows elephant populations to grow. So that's also a very important tool. To be able to understand how, how these systems react with elephants and elephants are reacting with these systems, we, we have to study them. So a lot of our management is, is based on the data that we collect uh, on a daily basis. All of the matriarchs in all of our elephant herds, we have six herds in the reserve. They all have collars on them. And most of them have satellite collars as well as VHF, which, which you use telemetry to locate. And then also within those herds and, and with some of the bulls, we've got a different type of collar called a data logger. Um, and what that does is allows us to look at the more fine scale movements. We also want to know what areas are they spending a lot of time in and really intensifying their they're feeding and foraging and, and in, in turn altering those landscapes. Also our field teams go out and they, they locate the elephants to, to see if there are any new births in, in the herds, who the mothers are so we can map you know, the genetics of the populations as well as obviously if there are any sick or injured animals. Elephants are, are very big animals. They're the biggest animals we work with. And so sometimes a bull can be six and a half tons, um, and we've had to catch animals that size before. And there, there are a lot of constraints when, when working with these animals. It's, um, so, so basically from start to finish, it'll be uh, the helicopter. We'll use a helicopter with our vet and, and someone from our ground team who will, who will take off and fly and find the elephant, the specific one we're looking for. Once the vet's seen the sort of size of the elephant, he'll make sure of drugs called a torphine and thionyl, and then he will dart the elephant from the helicopter. While this is going on, the, the chopper pilot and someone from our team will be, be in comms with the radio to the ground team, making sure that there are enough hands and ropes and chainsaws close, close by, so that when that animal starts showing signs of the, of the, of the dart, and we can be around to act quickly. Um, because what often happens is they fall down onto their sternum and because of the weight, you can just imagine on, on the lungs of that animal, they can actually really struggle to breathe. So the ground team's got to be close by, so as that animal's a little, getting a little bit uh, sleepy um, and stop moving, if it falls down incorrectly, there are people there to assist. And that might mean cutting a tree out the way or, or putting a little stick in the end of the trunk so that the, the airway is open.
we have a few minutes to actually get the collar on before the animal goes right over. And once that animal's on its side, it's quite hard to lift up the elephant's head and slide a, a collar underneath. Someone from the ground team will jump in, put the collar around, and then the rest of us will push that animal onto its side, and then we'll, we'll bolt the collar on on the bottom. vets we work with have a lot of experience with darting and capturing and moving elephants. We, we don't see many, many complications due to the mobilization process. It's mostly where the elephant ends up going down. Some elephants listen to helicopters and they end up in a nice open area. Others end up in, in the thickest bush you can possibly find. And also their communication with, with the rest of, of, of the elephants, if it's a herd and other herd members can sense that potentially a, a another herd members in distress. So, so they, it is a complex uh, operation, but uh, most of the time it, it, it can go quite smoothly. <laughs> Elephants up until quite recently have been, especially in Southern Africa, have done quite well. Um, obviously in, in parts of Africa, they have been persecuted and, and hunted and to some areas, local extinctions for, for their tusks, for the ivory. And what we're seeing with, with more and more overpopulation and, and human encroachment is the biggest threat in Southern Africa now is, is wildlife corridors in space. So it's a, it's a double-edged sword. You've got private small areas protecting these animals to the extent where we have too much and you've got other areas where they've been poached to, to your, like local extinction. How can people help? I mean, I think first and foremost is to, is to come and stay in our lodges, come and experience seeing elephants up close and personal, wild elephants um, at, at Pinda and and that goes hand in hand with, with the work we're doing here with our guests in, in beds and, and coming to enjoy and share this environment with us. It wouldn't be possible for us to, to look after these, these animals. So, so that's, that's the, I think, the primary one. If, if you really want to help a little bit more, uh, the best thing to do is to, is to book an elephant collaring experience where you can be involved with our team and get hands on in, in, in a research project. They are really charismatic and, I mean, you, if you've got an elephant standing quite close to you, you really do feel quite insignificant. And, and the fact that you can share a moment with such a big animal and it, for it to be so relaxed, um, especially in our population where a lot of them have come from having their parents poached and, and arriving here as orphans and now you've got them having their own calves on the game reserve. To see that is, is quite special and I think it's a huge success.